Welcome back. It's Philip Bickle at Legal Tyranny, July 6, 2021. Hope you all had a safe and fun July 4th, which is pretty much just an excuse to party today because everybody else doesn't really care about this uh, sort of subject matter that most of us are researching here. It's uh, too much work or beyond their comprehension, and nobody uh, kind of recognizes the fight on the legal side of things. You know, they'll recognize soldiers going abroad, but, you know, where are the people standing up fighting the courts? They're out there, but they're not getting attention. And they're not going to get attention because there are people like me out there that take the time to study exactly what the judges and the lawyers study. And when we go into court, we whip them. And they don't want that getting out there. And I don't think if you're one of those people, you need to start putting your stuff up on YouTube. There just isn't any money in this. I tried to make some money to cover my own costs. And they're minimal. They really are minimal if you're uh, doing this pro se. Lawyers are leeches. They're, they literally have you in a position where they could extort money out of you and then do very little work. They do a lot less work than a pro se person that knows what they're doing will be required to do just to be able to maybe get a fair hearing. But, yeah, you know, if, if you're one of these people trying to do the legal side of things and trying to uh, fight the uh, corruption in the courts, or at least wake each other up, because really, I, I don't think that there's a political solution to this, uh, not with the open agendas that have been published, you know, if, if any of you are well read, you're, you should be familiar with what's going on, the agendas, but again, if you're in the courts, try to put your uh, work up on YouTube, contact me, I'll, uh, you know, just advertise one here, but don't advertise if it's going to have sovereign citizen nonsense. It needs to be structured the way, maybe not structured, but you need to try to stick to the statutory related issues. I don't want people advertising things where they're relying on uh, gurus like, uh, what's that guy's name? Carl Lentz. I haven't seen a single case that this guy's won, okay? He's exceptionally well advertised. That should raise questions for a lot of you people. So anybody that gets very good coverage, you got a question. They may be one of these uh, false opposition leaders. And uh, if you're doing a pretty good job, you've probably already had, you know, like veiled recruitment attempts. I've had that with me. So uh, with that out of the way, let's get back to where I was on uh, this opening brief for the appeal on the traffic infraction side of my cases. We finished the statement of facts with the last video, so let's move on to the points on appeal. Let's see here. Yep, okay. So the points on appeal. In this appeal, defendant appellant presents the following points of error. Defendant appellant was not charged within the statute of limitations, and therefore the alleged offenses were time barred. That's it. I would have uh, appealed several other issues that were reversible errors, but again, I was shy on time and completely spent on energy. I did not have it, and if you have chronic fatigue issues, you know what I'm talking about. You hit a wall. Okay, uh, three, the standard of review. An appellate court may freely review conclusions of law, and the applicable standard of right of review is the right versus wrong test. Okay, remember, when you're citing stuff, cite it for the state that it belongs in. Questions presented. Whether defendant appellant was not charged within the statute of limitations, and therefore the alleged offenses were time barred. 
Okay, this is the juicy stuff. The meat and potatoes. Argument. Introduction. This appeal revolves around a failure to follow process. What is process? It's the code. It's the steps that are required to follow with everything considered, including court rules. Court rules are really important. If you've never read court rules, they're usually very short. Go look them up. They'll be shorter than most uh, sections of statutory code that you need to familiarize yourself with if you're going to fight in court. But look at the court rules. They're, they're important. Also look up the uh, judicial canons. So when judges start cutting you off, you can call them out and say, Hey, in this state, you know, state of, uh, I don't know, Maryland, the judicial canons rule blah 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 states you're supposed to give me an opportunity to be heard every time you step in and you speak and you cut me off you're not allowing me to be heard and you're interrupting my ability to concentrate call them out all right so with the argument here part b defendant appellant was not charged within a statute of limitations and therefore the alleged offenses were time barred Defense exhibits E and F show that I was issued a traffic citation infraction form by officer by enforcement officer Clarence Davies. Note that I call him an enforcement officer every time because that's uh, an important distinction from a prosecuting officer, and that's part of the arguments on the other side of the appeal for the criminal side. Now, the exhibits that I'm citing here. Uh, this one might have been the original copy of the traffic citation that the officer filed with the court, and then this would be the carbon copy that he gave to me, which actually was in violation of code. They're supposed to give you the original copy, because they're supposed to be done when they fill that out. And in this guy's case, he wasn't done. He added things to, it was either the infraction side or the criminal side might have even been both I can't really remember right now because no, I haven't haven't been reviewing those details but he definitely altered he altered the original from the way that it looked when he handed it to me now these two things show that I was issued the traffic citations that makes that point as a police officer, it selected the following alleged violations. No vehicle license plate, delinquent vehicle tax, no certificate of inspection, and registration not in vehicle. A police officer is an enforcement officer, not a prosecuting officer, also known as a prosecutor. This officer is not licensed as an attorney, nor does he work for a prosecutor's office. The citation filed with the court by Officer Davies is constitutionally insufficient and fatally defective. These are important legal phrases right here. You could do searches in uh, uh, Google or Find Law, and you'll be able to find cases, and they'll lay out what constitutes a uh, sufficient, say, charge, and they'll lay out what is insufficient and defective. Now, this, in particular, is a reversible error. If, if uh, the prosecution is to move forward on something that is constitutionally insufficient. The citation fails to allege all of the essential elements of the offenses alleged. How is one supposed to make an informed plea or prepare a defense when one has never been charged? He is not authorized to bring any cases criminally or civilly in the name of the people of the state of Hawaii. And with that claim, we have our citations, multiple citations here. The filing of the citations by this officer with the district court did not authorize the clerk of court to initiate a civil case against me in the name of the state of Hawaii. That decision was for an attorney from the prosecutor's office to make upon reviewing the allegations. Hawaii Revised Statutes 286-10 is in conflict with HRS 
28-2. Statute HRS 28-10 states in part, Except when required by state law to take immediately before a district judge a person arrested for violation of any provision of this chapter, which is the uh, traffic codes chapter in Hawaii, that's uh, 286, including any rule adopted pursuant to this chapter, any person authorized to enforce the provisions of this chapter, here and after referred to as enforcement officer, upon arresting a person for violation of any provision of this chapter, including any rule adopted pursuant to this chapter, shall issue the alleged violator a summons or citation printed in the form here and after described, warning the alleged violator to appear and answer to the charge against the alleged violator at a certain place and at a certain at a time within seven days after such arrest. Now, they are not sticking to this code in the courts at all. None of the cops are telling you to show up within seven days. It's all pushed out. So they're violating that statute. Are they getting charged with misdemeanors? No. Are they getting charged with violations for failing to follow this code? No. So they're not paying any fines and are not doing any jail time for blatantly violating this issue right here, the seven days. When I was given this, it was uh, November 11th, I believe. November 11th, 2016, maybe November 12th, I think 11th. And the court date that this guy put on there was December 15th. Is that seven days apart? No, it's over a month. So that's a violation. Now, if they catch you violating a statute that would, is not a criminal statute, but it's just, say, civil in nature, which is what, you know, I don't know that we could call it. Like, it's not a criminal thing, but they're, they're required to follow this. So, you know, they're, they are violating it. But when they violate this, they're not held to the same standard as you. Okay, they, they don't have to pay a fine every single time. And they'd have to pay a, a fine every single time because they're just not issuing these, these things and telling people to, to deal with this within seven days. And that is if they were even allowed to charge because they're not allowed to charge. Now see how they work this into the code? Now a prosecuting officer would have the authority to do everything in this. But see, this is where they, they uh, use vagary to allow other people to start taking on the roles that are not, that are expressly not theirs. So we have, you know, upon here and after referred to. So they're talking about an enforcement officer presenting charges. Now you tell me this this statute right here is is not it's just it's not valid. This isn't a valid statute. They don't want me raising this issue. They did not touch this issue. The uh, prosecution didn't even touch this issue from what I recall. They just avoided it like the plague because I've gone in and I've dissected what they're doing, dissected exactly what they're doing. Who's supposed to be doing what? And these people, I've taken advantage of, of the public's ignorance. So, this code right here, if I recall correctly, was passed before this code. I'd have to go look at the annotated statutes to see how far back everything goes. Uh, the annotated statutes in any code book will give you every, say, amendment. They'll tell you at the end of this section right here. So they'll have this, and then here at the end, they'll tell you, like, you know, HRS, uh, 280, you know, whatever, like, uh, whatever the public law was, they'll give you that info and they'll give you a year. And that year is when it was last amended. If there's only one thing there and it doesn't say something like AMD, you know, like amended, then that was actually the year that it, that it was passed into, uh, being a, a uh, 
act or statute and that's when it took effect it hasn't been touched since but knowing how the courts work they've always prosecuted and they uh, operated I don't know they've probably always been corrupt but they at least it, adhered to certain codes a little better back then than now now it's just rape and plunder okay so you know if you if you guys want to just stop and think about the other videos that I've I've presented to you so far and just study this this right here because it's massively uh, massively like unlawful with what they've put into this they've put the burden of putting charges on you on an enforcement officer that they clearly indicate has no business you know prosecuting they can't wear that hat that's for the prosecutor and then even if they could wear that hat they're supposed to tell you they're supposed to warn you that's what the very bottom you know appear at court at such and such date and time seven days if you're in Hawaii and you've been ticketed go look at it give me a response in the comments section let me know actually I don't care whatever state you're in if you've gotten a ticket let me know how far out they've from the date that they stopped you to the date that they gave you a court date tell me how far out that is because in most cases they are going over a month and in any states where they have indicated these uh, sort of deadlines they're typically violating that and that's something you can call them on burn them you want to burn them everything they violate burn them make them look horrible okay so uh, 28 2 states in part and this is the important part that deals with who's who's uh, doing what so 28 2 prosecutes offenders and enforces bonds the Attorney General shall be vigilant and active in detecting offenders against the laws of the state and shall prosecute the same with diligence okay that's the Attorney General all of the prosecutors offices in Hawaii and in other states derive their powers from this office the Attorney General's office they answer to the Attorney General okay cops are not under the Attorney General they don't have a license to practice law they're not getting paid out of that office they have nothing to do with the operations of that office other than pat what they should be doing which is passing on here's a complaint here's the facts as they know them let your prosecutors review this and see if we've got a case that's the gist of it okay all right that's it for now uh, we're gonna wrap it up there so if this was interesting and useful please hit the thumbs up if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing if you are subscribed uh, also uh, try to hit the notifications button so you get a no notification when I post a new video and eh, post where you're from if you don't mind let me see how far out this is reaching because uh, the statistics on uh, YouTube aren't exactly the most useful like maybe give me a state or a country or something if you don't mind it'd be useful you can see uh, where we're all coming from all right until next time